Welcome to the sailing and tourist mecca of Bermuda, which this week hosts the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess. Four, five, three, five, three, Australia coming through fast five, on the foils. Two, How's your timing one, there? Five, We're waiting for Canada right, right, to turn right, down right, towards right, the start. Right, Watch right, for the line to turn white and the right, season right, three's right, underway. Right, right, Great start by the Canadians. Right, right, Great start by right, Ainsley. Right. It's a sprint now for Mark right, One. It's going to be how fast can we foil to lead at this crucial right. Mark One? Going to be tight as we come towards that yellow circle. Overlaps are absolutely crucial at this stage of proceedings. Australia there looking to open the gap up here. Looks like Canada are going to turn down first, but did the British crew manage to sneak in on the inside? Yes, they did. It's Ainsley who leads at mark one, and he's straight into a manoeuvre, heading down towards gate two. That's very interesting that the British were leading the race and they chose to jibe out early. That makes me think that they can get to the bottom mark by jibing away from the boundary. So at gate two, it is all Great Britain out in front. Remember, they finished in fourth overall last season, looking for much better this year as Ben Ainsley and crew. Spain in second, Canada in third, and it looks like the entire fleet is going to that side, except at the last minute, Tom Slingsby and Australia bear away, and they will try the other side of the course. Great positioning for the New Zealand crew at this point in time. Ainsley probably one more manoeuvre coming. Spain's going to have the right of way as we approach here. Has Ben Ainsley judged this correctly on the British boat? Yes, he's just ahead. Slim pickings there, but he made a great manoeuvre. He'll lead at gate number three, and the Spanish are going to split the course. Both teams searching for wind. Here we go through gate number three, and this is going to be a tight crossing. Look at this. Tight moment for New Zealand. Fly too high as he dives inside, but he takes third. Phil Robertson's Canadian crew must stay clear and expect him to fly fast over the top. It's really tight back in the pack. No room to breathe at the moment. Uh, this is the umpire's penalty Denmark relative USA. And he's got lovely wind speed there as well compared to the Spanish who are in a slightly different patch of water and going downwind at almost 70 kilometers an hour. They really have it stended by taking a different side of the course to the Spanish at the top of the first upwind. Okay, so right turn here and then reach the finish. There we go, we're just on board with Ben Ainsley there. He's talking about one more right turn. He's going to head to the finish now. It looks like a commanding performance. 500 metres ahead of the second place Canadian boat, masterclass. The race one victory goes to Great Britain and Ben Ainsley. What a performance by Canada. What a comeback by Slingsby. He's back through to fourth after a disappointing start to the race. Jimmy Spithill's going to be happy with third, but wow, what a comeback by the champion. Jimmy Spithill looking for a big win as they will finish in third place. The Australians fourth. They're all a little bit early here. Coming through the middle, it's Great Britain towards the bottom of the line again. Watch for the line to go wide. Right. It's tight. Great Britain's timing was brilliant again. Spain at the top of the line. Can the Spanish get the speed from up at this end of the line and blast down towards Mark 1? It looks good for Great Britain once again. OK, that's the voice of Phil Robertson saying the ley line's a little bit away. Great Britain set up to jive. And look at the lead, just three minutes into this race, it already could be a race-defining lead. Phil Robertson, Canadian crew looking great position here as the Spanish. They're looking to find space on the other side of the course. Risky manoeuvre for Jordi Zamar and his Spanish crew, though. Good jive by the British, they're now back in control of things, but that was a mistake by the British and Robertson's pounce tight as we come downwind. He's off the foils on the British boat. This is an opportunity for Canada. Can he go round the outside, stay on the foils? This could be a big moment for this fledgling Canadian crew. Phil Ainsley must keep... Ainsley's got to keep clear. He's got to keep clear, you hear? He's got to keep clear. Protest coming. You can hear Phil Robertson saying, I'm super happy being fast. That's because he's in the lead and he is trying to use his boat speed as we see the Canadians in shot there and push over the top of the rest of the fleet and effectively shut down the race course options for everyone behind him. Phil Robertson and the Canadians are on their way to picking up their very first win as we look at all the chaos behind them. 
France now in second, Great Britain in third, but here comes Jimmy Spithill in fourth. Oh, it's a really slow maneuver oh by my. Great Britain. He's got to give room for Spithill here. There's going to be a protest. Wow, Spithill has to avoid a collision. Berlin coming through. If he can stay on the foils, this could be a third from nowhere. Big oh, error. Oh, it's a penalty GBR relative USA. Oh. Taking room to watch, to which they're not entitled. Oh, I've got to say, on this occasion, I do agree with Chief Umpire Craig Mitchell there. He's oh. going to have a huge penalty. He has to drop behind the US crew. Phil Robertson brings it across the line. France bounces back from ninth to second in race two. Spain coming in with speed, but I think it's going to be all about the timing of New Zealand and Canada. Can they build speed quick enough from that close to the line? Coming in hot, Jordi Jamar on board the Spanish boat. Watch for it to turn white. Ooh. It's a really tight start. Jordi uh, Jamar. The umpires, uh, OCS, New Zealand and Canada oh. uh, over the line early. No late starters, no okay, delayed starters. So that now means Canada and New Zealand must drop behind the pack before Mark 1. Here we go on the inside, Great Britain has the right of way. France has right of way on the USA, the Americans hug tight, and how about Spain? How about this decision? That's a big decision for me, that is the unbiased gate to go to. The Spanish are sailing extra distance, we saw it in race one, it absolutely pumped the Australians and they fell down the leaderboard. I think the Spanish will pay for this manoeuvre. Let's listen into the British and see which way they're going to go at this Wynwood gate. You're listening to Ben Ainsley there, and he's talking about going straight. No more manoeuvres, let's just turn right. Try and keep it simple, try and keep the speed high. And with the wind dropping below 20 kilometres an hour, that makes it very hard to do foiling tacks and foiling jibes. And here they are at gate number three. That one branded near in recognition of SailGP's new global partner, a really cool blockchain technology. Glad to have them part of SailGP season three. Look at the speeds for both the French and the Great Britain squads, over 60 kilometers an hour as Great Britain dips behind France. But are Great Britain heading to the corner of death? We know that oh, all yeah. the boats that go out to the bottom left-hand side of this race course, as we see the French go round in first, the mark that the British are going round in the bottom bit of that course has not been great so far today. Tight cross coming here, right of ways with Great Britain. Let's see what the French do. One more tack. That's the same manoeuvre that they overtook the British on the last upwind gate. And I think you have to get left as you look sort of upwind on the downwind. And the French have gone back to where they took the lead and the British are right on their heels. This is going to be a sprint to the bottom gate and the French have to defend the British. Here's Great Britain. They pulled in front in the last moments of this race. And that is what France is looking at, trying to track down the Brits. Here we go, race number three to the line, and the win will go to Sir Ben Ainsley and Great Britain Sail GP getting things started off with a bang here in Bermuda. France grabs second, their second of the day. Tremendous performance by them, and Tom Slingsby, slippery and all, slides in for third. Just 10 seconds to go. Who's got their timing right? It looks like Spain and the USA at the bottom of the line are going to be coming in fast. No room for Conte and the French at the top. The French oh. are trying to barge in. Wow, that was punchy as the line went clear. Penalty on the French boat. They're going to need to drop behind the fleet. But it's the Spanish crew at the bottom of the line who are absolutely charging towards Mark 1. And they should have control of their first decision. <laughs> So a near collision on day number two to kick things off in race number four, and it's Spain. Yeah, this is the umpires, this is the umpires. Uh, France here been black flagged. Uh, taking her to watch, you're not entitled. Black flag on the French Whoa. boat there. That was a seriously aggressive move by Contant de la Pierre. What a mistake. Mark number one, it is Spain, New Zealand, Denmark, the USA, and Great Britain who is involved in that start line fracas. Craig Mitchell, the chief umpire, Freddie making the call. So three boats that I mentioned at the top of the show that needed to perform in this race were Spanish, New Zealand and Denmark. And boy, oh boy, are they doing that. The leaderboard has really congested overall.
They just inside there. They had the right of way, Peter Burling and his crew, and he's taken Hi, advantage. Mate. As Freddie said, okay. this is the race where Burling needs to perform if he's to have any it's chance of making the final. Denmark lead New Zealand away at gate three, and Mainsley sneaks inside. He has the right of way. Canada must stay clear. There's nothing in it in the pack. Big lead for these two crews, nearly 100 metres ahead of the third place Spanish. So one more upwind and one more downwind to go. As things stand, Spain, France, USA and Switzerland would be eliminated and unable to make the final race, race six. That's yeah. there, a big moment in the race there. The Kiwis at the vital moment. Big turn of boat speed there. Look at the angle difference as they start to put turbulent wind onto the Danish boat. It's only going to get harder for Nikolai Sehested from here, but it is close. There's a big yellow line showing us where that ley line is. Peter Burling doesn't have that, but he seems pretty confident that the ley line's really close. And Burling, good jibe, should be set up from here. Big mistake yep. by the Danish crew as well. Look, top of screen, they've fallen off the foils. They're going to struggle to make it back up to the gate from here. I don't know what's happened. Opportunity for the Spanish crew at the moment. And this is going to be a walk in the park for Burling wow. from here. What an error by Sehested and his crew. He said he was going to sit there and play it easy. Anything but that. Big, big mistake by the Danish. And in the end, the Kiwis on day number two take the win. Spain, after a great start, some trouble in the middle. They'll come through and get second place. There's a lot of teams now that are scrapping for just single points. How's the timing? USA has a nice controlling position. New Zealand coming in from the back. I don't know if they're going to find a gap down there. They're going to really need to thread the needle. Ten seconds to go. Switzerland at the top of the line, but it's going to be Canada out of the middle of the line. How's the timing now? Watch for the line to turn white as the crews turn down. Perfection from Australia there. What a start by Slippery Slingsby across the line, and he's going to lead the fleet away. Chased by Phil Robertson. This is the race that has to happen, and New Zealand are out the back at the moment but it's Ainsley on board the British boat look at the ladder lines it shows he may have moved up to second at the moment great move by Ainsley in a dark patch of water and that shows big burst of speed for Ainsley Slingsby's going to be leading at gate two but Ainsley's got himself back in the race here we go, it's Great Britain coming in on starboard jibe. They have the right of way, but there's a lot more boats getting across in front of them than I thought would. Easy left turn for Slingsby. Whoa, big evasive action by Phil Robertson. He has to dive out the way, and it's going to be Ainsley leading out of this side. It does mean he'll have clear wind. Will he be able to find more wind on this side of the course? If he's made the right choice and there is more wind, he's going to go faster and it could get him back in the race. Fourth place for the British crew at the moment, but they have space and we know for sure they're going to send it. I'll be interested to see what the Danish crew do here. Have they done their maths on board and figure out that they need to have a bit of a punt and try and take, overtake the USA and Australia? Will they try and go to the opposite mark? And it looks like they will. This is their play to try and get in the grand final, but they still need Canada to slip down a little bit more as they slip down to sixth. This could be the moment that shakes up the medal race. Board drop coming. This tack could be crucial. They cross in second. Now they tack right on top of the wind of Jimmy Spittle, but Spittle's going nearly twice the speed. Look at the top of the mast now at the moment. Denmark must start to keep clear very soon. Jimmy Spittle can turn him all the way up into the wind, and there he go. He builds. Wow, great aggressive sailing by Sehested, but the old master Spittle, he's played that match race games a few times before, and he absolutely nails it. Holds on to second. It's going to be tight on this final downwind. Denmark looking for something to possibly get past them as the Canadians have a two-point advantage as it stands right now going into the final. And the win to Australia and now everyone doing the count back. Wow, it's really tight coming in here in the pack. Look at Canada chasing down the young Swiss team. It's going to be tight there, but I think it's going to be too little too late for Sehested's Danish, Danish team. That jibe on the final run in race yeah. four where they threw away two places. Wow, how costly is that going to be for this Danish team? These things can come back to haunt you. Jimmy Spittle.
There we go. Second place for USA in race five here. A nice way to finish things for them. Nikolai Sehestet going to be a story of what might have been. Great day from them today. And look at this. Canada coming in a drag race. Will they touch the line before the Swiss? Oh, it's going to be inches in it. I think the Canadians snuck it. It's so, so tight. The Swiss missed the last jive, put two holes in the water. And again, what an unfortunate time for that to happen for the young Swiss crew. They dropped from fifth to sixth. Looking late on Great Britain, really aggressive from the Canadian crew at the moment. It's going to be really, really tight as we come into the start line now. Two seconds. Timing looks good from Australia. Perfect start from Australia. The Canadians are going to have to try and hang on on the inside. And what has the British crew got up to here? Really late at the start. They've got a job on from here. Look at the speeds of over 70 kilometers an hour as they approach mark number one. This is the final race. Who will take home the title here in Bermuda? So what Ainsley's got to think about here is splitting away from the two other boats. I'd expect an early jibe from Ainsley and let Canada and Australia mess around with each other. And there the British jibe and they go out to the far hand side of the course. Looks like one more manoeuvre from all the crews. Slingsby desperate to be going the same way as all the other boats. That gives them less chance of leapfrogging ahead of them. We're on board Australia here, listening to the Australian crew, bringing them upwind at gate number two here. And all the other boats look set to follow. This is great news for Slingsby and Australia. But again, no, it's Ainsley. He turns away, looks to split. He's hoping to find more wind on the other side of the course. But the Australians are going really fast. Well, the ladder lines currently show a 200 metre advantage over from Australia to Great Britain. The Canadians still staying close, just 88 metres behind the Australian crew. And you can see there our top left of picture that the Australian boat is flying slightly to 10 centimetres higher out of the water than the other two boats. More height out of the water means more speed. Interesting thing here is the British have rejoined onto the back of this two boat match race. In the background, the battle for second is getting tight. It looks to me at the moment as though the battle for first is all well and done. Ainsley on board Great Britain needs to be sure to be ahead. It's a tight cross. He doesn't have the right away, but he's through. Looks to me like Tom Slingsby's going left turn, and he'll be hoping the other boats follow him. Just setting up for a bear away, turning away from the wind. Slingsby has to change his rudder setting. These are like Formula One drivers. It's tight. Is there an overlap there with Canada and Great Britain? Doesn't look like it. They're going to follow each other around. Ainsley in second, tied together by a piece of string with the Canadian crew, but they're 200 metres behind the two-time Sail GP champion, Slingsby in Australia. And there you go. That was Ainsley. We're on a match with Canada. Ainsley's given up on winning this event. He's focused now on securing second. Here we go, simultaneous jibes. Canada turn in the background, and with Great Britain we're gonna go with, but we're back with the leaders now. Just seven or 800 meters to go until this final gate, and there's no mistakes coming from this Australian crew so far. What do we always say about the Australians? They're fast and they stay out of trouble. Yep. And that's exactly what they've done here in Bermuda. The speed still over 60 kilometers an hour for the Australians as they bring it home. A great recovery by Sir Ben Ainsley as they were last in third. They move up to second place for the valuable points, and Canada has dropped back to third place. But as we come to the finish line, the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess goes the way of the two-time defending champions. Australia brings it home. Great Britain will claim second place, and Canada, a great performance. Guys, remember, this is a brand new team, and on the first event, they get themselves into the great final. Dang, if we make that final race, we're hard to beat, and we, uh, we really perform well in those final three-boat match races. We're turning into a bit of a specialist in the three-boat match race, which uh, I didn't think would happen, but yeah, we've just got a lot of confidence when we hit that final race.